When you take any kind of lesson on a craft, the first thing they always talk about is the importance of knowing and finding your voice. But what does that even mean? And how do you go about finding your voice? Well, on this week's episode of the School for Writers podcast, we're going to tell you exactly what it means to find your own unique voice as a writer and how you can do just that. Do you want a safe and fun way to practice putting your unique voice, your unique writing out into the world? A mailing list is such a great way to not only build your following as a writer and create a whole audience for your future books, but a place to practice putting your writing out into the world. People who join your mailing list, they say, hey, I want to read your stuff. So you already know that these people are interested in hearing what you have to say as a writer. Mailing lists are the number one tool that every writer who wants to build a strong, thriving writing career needs. So that's why I put together a whole guide on how to get started with your mailing list. You can find that at schoolforwriters.com slash mailing list. It's a 101 guide, so if you are just starting out or if you have a mailing list that's kind of boring and dull and needs some life brought back into it, this guide is for you. The guide will help you figure out how to start your mailing list, why you even need a mailing list, and understand the step-by-step instructions you need to do to get your list out into the world. Head to schoolofwriters.com slash mailing list to find a great and wonderful way to start practicing putting your voice out into the world. Welcome back to the School for Writers podcast. I'm really excited about this week's episode because every single writing class I've ever taken just hammers into your head how important it is to have a solid, strong voice as a writer. And yet, I cannot find someone who has defined what that fully means yet. So today, we are going to give you a general idea of what voice is, what voice isn't, and how you can find yours. We're also going to talk about when you should use your own unique voice and when actually mimicking other people's unique voice can make you a lot of money as a writer. First, though, I would love for us to start with a slight overview of the five main elements of the craft of writing. Now, I did a full in-depth episode all about craft. It's episode 34, how to become a better writer. And we will put a link to that in the show notes. So if you want to go deep into craft and to the five elements, go and check that out. We also are going to do individual episodes on each of those elements. Like today, we're talking about voice, but I want to give you a general overview right now in case you haven't heard that episode and you're not familiar with the elements of craft. As a reminder for those who have listened to the episode and for those who might not know, Craft is simply practicing a skill with the purpose of getting better at it. We're not trying to be great at it. We eventually might be masters at it. But every time we practice it, the goal is to get a little bit better. So when we think about craft, we're also often thinking about kind of the people who are seen in literary circles as the creme de la creme of writing, the people who would have their book taught in like a Yale classroom or Oxford or something super fancy and snazzy. And that will get us to often think that we don't deserve to like think of ourselves as writers who practice our craft. But if you journal, if you write posts on social media, if you are in my Write Your Friggin' Book Already program and writing a book, if you're in the school for writers and you're working on the craft of building a business for your writing and the craft of making time for your writing, the craft of writing regularly, these are all ways of you to work on getting slightly better each time that you are writing. And that in itself is craft. So you're practicing craft if you are writing at all. The five main elements of craft are voice or essence, dialogue, character, action or plot, and place or space. So we're gonna do, you can again, go look at back at that old episode, How to Become a Better Writer, episode 34, if you wanna go into those and get a general idea of all, all of those and keep your eye out and subscribe to the School for Writers podcast because we're gonna go into each of those throughout the next year to help you really understand how to hone all of those crafts. And if you don't wanna wait for those episodes to come out, you can get them right now in the School for Writers Academy by joining us. So we go to schoolforwriters.com slash academy if you wanna delve into craft starting right now. Okay, now let's talk about voice, that first element of the five elements of craft. Our goal today is to help you find your unique voice as a writer. 
But what does having a unique voice even look like? First off, it reflects who you are and how you exist in this world. So you're going to have a different voice as a writer if you are super conservative Republican in America or if you're super liberal progressive in Sweden. You're going to have a completely different voice if you, like me, grew up in a rural farming town on the Mexican-U.S. border versus somebody who grew up in New York City in the opposite part of the country and the continent. So your voice reflects who you are and how you exist in the world. That's the first thing. The second thing, your voice is not trying to be someone else. Although we will talk later about how actually using someone else's voice can be a great way to make money as a writer. But your own unique voice is not trying to mimic someone else. It's not trying to take someone else's essence. You aren't going to sit and develop your voice by trying to be Mark Twain, by trying to be you know, Virginia Woolf by trying to be some person you read on the internet. No, your own unique voice is a really palpable, solid understanding of yourself that you need to have to know who you are, not what you think a writer should sound like. Third and finally, your unique voice, it's open, it's honest, and it's real. And now it might not be quite ready for you to be open, honest, and real publicly, but at the very least, as you're refining your voice in your journal, you want to be as open, honest, and real as you can, because that's the only way you get back to who you are uniquely, not you trying to mimic another author's work. Now, in terms of craft, there are actually three ways in which you determine your voice. First, it's your style, how you technically choose to tell a story. Are you somebody who speaks a lot in first person, third person? Are you really witty and sarcastic? Do you use run-on sentences or are your sentences short and curt? Are you a poet or are you nonfiction? Where do you line in your style? That helps define what your voice is. Second is your perspective or how you see and describe the events around you. This is also known as your point of view. So my perspective is somebody who grew up queer in a small conservative rural farming town that was on the border. That is my perspective. There are very few people who have that perspective from my hometown. My own personal perspective of that experience though will always be different than everybody else. So it's how I see the lens I look through in the world based on my past experiences, how I see and describe events, how you see and describe events will be your point of view or your perspective. And the third part of voice for craft is your tone. What's the underlying expression of how you think and feel? So again, sarcastic. So that was a really great choice that you'd made in your outfit today versus that was a really great choice you made today in your outfit. You know, like there's a, you know, a little side talk like, oh, yeah, that was a bad idea. No, that was a bad idea. You know, that was a really, that was a brilliant idea, Lauren, versus that was a brilliant idea, Lauren. So if you think about the tone in the ways that you talk, that really also comes across in how you how you write and how the words come across. So style, perspective, and tone all come together in a craft literary way to determine what your voice is as a writer. So you might already actually have a good idea of what your voice is. You are already developing it. You know your own unique style. Are you super bold in your co and colorful prints or do you dress a little bit more demure? What's your perspective? You know your history already. That's your perspective on life. What is your tone? How do you talk with friends? Are you tend to be angrier? Do you tend to be a uh, eternal optimist? Do you tend to be sarcastic? Do you tend to be the jokester? Do you tend to be the serious one, the emotional one? Like whoever you already are, that is coming across in your writing already. So it's just about refining it. And a journaling is such a great place to put that down and start defining it for yourself. Another great way to develop your own unique voice is to actually read a lot and a variety of books. So there's a famous quote that I'm probably going to destroy right now, but it says, that plagiarism is stealing from one person, but art is stealing from everybody. And I think that's true. That particular quote is about painters, but writers need to do the same too, right? You get this idea from this person, that person, you walk through a whole museum and you leave inspired. You read through a whole bookstore and you leave inspired. You take bits and pieces from different people. 
versus if you just read one style of book all the time, you're going to mimic that style versus developing your own from reading a lot. So one of the greatest ways to develop a voice of your own is to read a large variety of books. Now, if you're trying to branch out, we got you. At the end of every episode of the School for Artists podcast, we have a book rec just for you. And, and we try to make it as varietal as possible. So check that out. And you can also follow us at School for Writers on Instagram and look at our IGTV where we post just the book rec on its own every Saturday. So we have a whole recommendation of books for you right there. And another amazing, great, wonderful way to develop your unique voice as a writer is to write a book. Writing a book requires you to sustain your voice throughout the process. And so it's a great way to really hone in your voice and understand what voice you want to have. So if you're interested in that, you can check out our Write Your Friggin' Book Already program and get on the wait list for next year. We only open that once a year to the public, but you can get on the wait list now at writeyourfrigginbookalready.com. Then, you know what you got to do to develop your unique voice is you got to journal some more. You got to read some more and you got to write even more books. Keep writing. That is the best way to develop your voice as a writer. If you are feeling stuck, here are some questions to ask yourself. There's some great questions to take to your actual journal and answer them in your journal. So first, how do I identify culturally, politically, socially, etc.? Your identity plays so much into your voice, so really defining it will help you define your voice. Asking yourself what you want to say about your life experience. That's such a profound question. Like, what do I want to say? What do I want my voice to be? What do I want it to sound like? How do I want it to come across? Also, you can ask a friend to describe you, or you would ask a writing coach or someone like me to just help you describe your voice. That way you can help hone in on what other people are seeing as well. What am I drawn to reading? What authors do I love? That's such a great question because listen, you're going to be your biggest reader. You're going to have to read whatever you write many, many times. So understanding what you're drawn to will help you understand what you could write so you'll maybe even enjoy the process of reading and editing your books. And then ask yourself, what is unique about me? What is unique? What do I have? that nobody else has in this world? What perspective is solely mine? What style is solely mine? What tone do I love to have? What makes me unique, both as a human and as a writer? So that's the importance of finding your own unique voice. It's what makes someone wanna pick up all of your books in the bookstore. It's what makes someone love following you on social media. It's what makes somebody on, stay on your mailing list and respond to your emails. It's what makes somebody join one of your courses or programs. Your voice is what makes you as a writer. However, there are some great examples and times in which you don't want to use your own unique voice, in which you want to actually mimic someone else's unique voice. So here are some examples of times in which having your own unique voice can actually act against you, and instead you want to mimic someone else's voice. Ghostwriting. If you want to write a book for somebody else, you need to mimic their voice. Yes, you're going to infuse some of yourself into this and to any everything you do as a writer, as a person. But understanding someone else's perspective and story and how they tell a story can help you write their book for them as a ghostwriter. Copywriting, that includes social media and email marketing, is such a huge business for writers. It's a great way to make money and use your writing skills and talents. And you're required to use that brand's voice and understand that brand's voice and speak for that brand or person's voice. There's also technical writing. When you get a new refrigerator or a car manual, those there are writers that write those manuals. Technical writing is understanding the tone of the company you're writing for and what you're writing about. And there's lots of money to be made in technical writing. And a really fun example of when you have to mimic someone else's voice is a TV writer's room. So say you were on the episode for Friends, you would have to understand who Chandler Bing is, his sarcasm, his tone, his personality, versus who Monica is to be able to work in that writer's room. So TV writers are very great at mimicking the voice of characters that the showrunner developed or that the actors developed too. So there's lots of money to be made in replicating voice. There's lots of careers in replicating voice. So if you aren't sure who your voice is yet, you might wanna go mimic someone else's. So while 
mimicking someone else's voice is actually really great, you do kind of want to know your own unique voice first and really do that exercise to know who you are so you can help distinguish yourself in the two. But if you want to practice as well mimicking someone else's voice, here's how you can do that. One, you can write fan fiction. I love fan fiction. It's so fun to see other people's interpretation of certain worlds. There are whole jobs out there that you can create creating your idea within someone else's world. So for example, Harry Potter has become bigger than JK Rowling. You could write a movie about Harry Potter. You could write fan fiction about Harry Potter. You can be a part of Potter World Online. You could work at Warner Brothers and Universal Studios and help them with the actual like product creation of Harry Potter stuff. There's also Star Wars. I know plenty of authors who have gotten book deals and been able to write within the Star Wars series and realm. So if there is something that you're a big fan of and you want to write for them, starting fan fiction is a great way to do that. You can also reenact your favorite movies or TV shows. Be a certain character in a TV show. Understand how that is. And then you can go and write yourself a spec script. If you want to be a TV writer, I'm not a TV writer expert myself, but if you want to be a TV writer, I know that one of the first things you need to do to be able to get an agent and get into the TV writing world is to write a spec script or a script that is something that you could actually see the characters having on the show. So writing a spec script uh, for a show that you really like is a great way to practice mimicking another character's voice or another writer or actor's idea for a character. You can do mirroring on social media. If you have TikTok or Reels or all these other different social media ways to act, literally have like their video and your video, those big do our dance moves ones or redo, repost our reel that's huge on social media right now, that is a way of mimicking, of learning how to do someone else's something they created. So take a person you like, either a nonfiction author if you're that, or a poet you love, or a writer you love, and mimic them and learn how to talk in their voice like you would if you were writing their social media, or if you were putting out posts for them as a copywriter, or a celebrity that you like. Say, you know, you guys know my love for The Rock. If I wanted to be The Rock's ghostwriter, I would need to practice ghostwriting in The Rock's voice. Now that's not always the greatest way to like go and get a ghostwriting dig, and we'll have a whole episode on ghostwriting for you in the future. But if you want to learn to, if you want to work with celebrities or work with other people who aren't writers but have something to tell, ghostwriting is a great way to do that, a great way to make money, but you're going to need to practice that voice first. And then one of the easy ways to do it and have fun, and I actually love doing this, is to journal from someone else's perspective. Maybe a character that you love in a book, the series that you love, or a famous person whose perspective you might like, or someone who's dead whose perspective you might want to try to like embody, or one of your character's perspective. That's a great way to understand this perspective, style, and tone of someone else, not just yours. Because your characters each have a voice. The narrator in your nonfiction story has a voice. So understanding mimicking can actually help you be a better writer when you're distinguishing different parts of your book from each other. Okay, so to recap this episode, Craft is simply practicing your art of writing in our situation to get better at it. And there are five main elements of craft. And if you want to delve into those, go back and listen to episode 34, How to Become a Better Writer. And also follow the School for Writers podcast because we are going to continue to go do these deep dives of craft for you. And if you want lots of support and lots of help in getting better at writing, join the School for Writers Academy at schoolforwriters.com slash academy. The link to all of those things I just mentioned are in your show notes, so you don't have to remember them all. Just scroll down and click those links there. Second, voice is style, point of view or perspective, and the tone of your writing. It's also important to know your own voice as a writer, but you can make money mimicking or creating other people's voice for them. Okay, so that is all about finding and using your unique voice and finding and using other unique voices to help benefit you as a writer. And again, if you want support with all of this, we got you. Follow the School for Writers podcast and join us in the School for Writers Academy at schoolforwriters.com slash academy because we are here to help you define and find your voice and tell your story to the world because the world needs your story now more than ever.
This week's School for Writers book recommendation is The Calling by Raw Goddess. Three fundamental shifts to stay true, get paid, and do good. I found that this book, as somebody who wants to build a thriving career for myself as a writer, as a teacher and educator of writers, it was so helpful to understand how to do good, true good, how to get paid for that good, and how to continue to build all of that into my business and my life so I feel aligned with my values. It gave you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. It helped you, it gave journal prompts. You all know I love a good journal prompts. Ra gives really beautiful mantras for you to repeat to yourself. It is like having a whole course with Ra Goddess, an amazing, wonderful entrepreneurial and spiritual coach in your ears. Having Ra Goddess actually talk to you. I listened to it in an audiobook and I loved just walking through the park and hearing Ra Goddess speak to me about my true good and my calling. Now, y'all know I love audiobooks, but this is actually one I'm going to buy both physical and audio because yes, I love having Ra Goddess's voice in my head, but so much of this book is so like a course book or a workbook that I'm really excited to get my copy. I already ordered it and physically we answer the journal questions and do all of the prompts within it. I truly feel like just listening to it helped me be feel more aligned in my life and what I want to put out in the world and what I want to offer and how I want to build my business. And yes, if you were a writer and you're saying right now you're not in business, you absolutely are. If you were ever trying to sell your writing, even if you're working for someone else, you're in business. If you're trying to get paid and do good, you want to hear Raw Goddess's tips for being in business. Once again, the book is by Raw Goddess, R-H-A-G-O-D-D-E-S, Raw Goddess, and it's called The Calling, Three Fundamental Shifts to Stay True, Get Paid, and Do Good. You can get yourself a copy of Raw Goddess's The Calling by using the bookshop.org link in our show notes. Not only does that allow you to support a local independent bookstore when you purchase your copy, but it also supports the School for Writers podcast because that's an affiliate link. If you, like me, love yourself a good audiobook, you can grab it through the link below to Libro.fm. That link not only gives you a free audiobook, but also gives us a free audiobook so we can keep recommending books to you. If you want to try to do good in this world and make money at the same time and be able to thrive, I highly suggest picking yourself up a copy of The Calling by Raw Goddess.